Hello, my name is Lee Rowley, Supervisor of Pest Control in the Woodson Complex. I'm the Supervisor of Pest Control Services for Fairfax County Public Schools. Our services were responsible for over 220 buildings, including all the centers. And our job is to perform pest control services on all the schools, animal control, and to make it safer for everybody in the schools, staff, students, and parents. Our main subject is, uh, like I said, pest control. No matter what type of your building that you're in, uh, there's always pest control that needs to be serviced in the schools. Uh, in Fairfax, we have an elite group of pest technicians. All of us have over 20 years experience in this, doing this service. So there's basically no job in Fairfax pest control that we would not be able to perform. The main responsibilities of us as pest controllers is to educate the custodians and staff on how to prevent pest problems in the schools. Like our job is uh, help you help us. That's how I'll put it. We help with all the animal issues like skunks, raccoons, foxes. Uh, we don't necessarily remove them. We come out and inspect for them. And we have a contractor that will come and remove them for us. Okay. Custodians, remember, are not licensed pest controllers. In order to do this job, you have to be commercially certified by the State of Virginia Department of Agriculture and EPA to do this job. So please do not buy any outside products or anything to use in the school, including mouse snap traps too. You cannot use them in the schools. Let the professionals do it. Uh, by scooping the, keeping the building, the schools and grounds clean of debris and harborage areas, that will eliminate a lot of the pests outside of the school. Uh, your dumpsters, keep your dumpster lids closed at night. Animals like to come in like raccoons, possums or whatever come in, get in the dumpsters, start going through them. Next thing you know, you go out there to dump some trash and you're gonna run into an unexpected animal in those dumpsters. And make sure all windows and doors are sealed properly. Remember, good housekeeping is the best pest control. Our first subject we're going to talk about is cockroaches. Uh, cockroaches is one of the most common pests that we deal with, not only in the schools, but almost everywhere. Uh, we do treat for them. There's ways that you can prevent them by good housekeeping, wiping up juices, juice spills, uh, getting crumbs up off the floor. Don't store boxes or paper bags anywhere because a lot of roaches come into the boxes and paper bags that you bring, might bring from the store or they're in a storage area somewhere. Uh, roaches have about 27 different diseases that they carry. And if a person has asthma or whatever, they can really know if there's a lot of roaches because they would start to wheeze. They get affected by it. We treat roaches by coming in and doing basically a crack and crevice treatment, which will get rid of them. Let us do it, not you. There's four different types of roaches we deal with. The first one was a German roach. This one right here is an oriental roach. These are the roaches that we find around broken drain pipes and shower drains and stuff that's not, not been used for years. Okay, that's why we advise the custodians sometimes when they mop in the locker rooms to dump their mop water in those drains. You gotta keep something going in them drains to keep them roaches from coming up through there. They might not be in your school, but those drains lead to a sewer line and that's where they come up through there. Or you could have a line that's broken on the ground and they come in through there. That's the main problem that we have when we're dealing with uh, oriental cockroaches. American cockroaches, they love to be around moisture. Uh, you usually will see a lot of these when in the summer when it's hot and humid out and you're near a wooded area. They're what we call occasional invaders. Uh, they come in 
periodically. If you leave a door open, they do fly. You might find them on the wall of the building by the lights at night. So when you leave that door open at night to go dump the trash or whatever, that's when they will start coming in. But they are occasional invaders, and we also treat for them. Brown banded cockroaches. Those are the roaches that are around decaying wood in areas like that. We very seldom see these in the schools. They might be around the schools when we're spraying during a perimeter treatment and they're under the mulch where it's a lot of moisture and heat. Mosquitoes. We don't necessarily treat for mosquitoes. Our thing is a lot of times when we get a call for mosquitoes, it's because the grass is high or there's puddles of water around, especially the trailer areas. Our main thing to control the mosquitoes is keep the, uh, any standing water, get rid of it, bird baths, make sure you empty those out with water because any standing water, mosquitoes will put their babies, their later larvae in there and that's where they're at. Okay, this is one of our priority pests that we deal with are the bees. Do not spray anything on these bee nests, okay? Because a lot of stuff that you use in the schools, they're poison free and a lot of it really don't work. So if you go out there and spray, then you call us and we come, the bees are agitated and it's harder for us to get to the nest. Let us handle the bees. Honey bees. If you see honeybees around the school, we cannot treat for them because they are now an endangered species. We're no longer allowed to treat. So if we come out and treat for bees, if bees are around your dumpsters, we cannot spray those dumpsters because we would kill non-target pests like the honeybee. And we need them. Yellow jackets. Yellow jackets are the bees. These are the most common bees we see around schools. A lot of times custodians, they have to be careful, especially when you're cutting the grass. You might see a little hole in the ground. It might not look like nothing, but when that lawnmower runs across it, the vibration will set them off and they will sting you and they sting you in bunches. So please let us, if you see a hole in the ground, you see some bees flying around it, call us pest control because we have to go and treat that. Then we have to dig that nest out of the ground. If we don't get that nest out, they're gonna continue coming once that larvae starts to mature. Bald-faced hornets. Bald-faced hornets is one of the, another main bee that we deal with. Please, if you see any of these cones hanging from a tree on the side of the building, do not go near it, do not touch it. Call us immediately because these bees, hornets, are very aggressive and they will chase you. And what happens, they'll give you a warning, they fly past you, that's your first warning. Your second warning is they will hit you. Once they hit you, they tag you with a pheromone. If you stay there, every hornet inside of that nest is gonna come after that pheromone. So please, if you see these, call us immediately. That is priority. Umbrella wasps, paper wasps. These are a lot of the wasps that's up in the corners of the windows of the schools. They're under the handrails, the wooden rails of the trailers. Some of the metal railings, they might not put the plugs in there, put a nest inside of there. If a custodian or whoever, teacher, kids are going up that ramp, they're gonna vibrate, they're gonna come out, and they will, they are very aggressive. And their stings, they burn before they hurt. So please, if you see these, any type of bees, we need to know immediately so we can get it treated accordingly. Mud daubers. Mud daubers do not sting you. Mud daubers, a lot of people are scared of them because they look like a wasp. All they do is go out, catch other insects, trap them in these mud tubes that be up on the walls by the doors and eat them. So they pretty much help us more than they hurt us. If you see these on the school, all you gotta do is take a broom handle or something and just knock it off the wall. There's nothing inside of it but dead insect carcasses. They do not sting you. Mining bees. These are the bees that you might see in the grassy area on the side of a hill. They're flying around low to the ground. 
these bees do not sting. A couple of years ago, we were able to come out and treat these. We can no longer spray the Saturday Hill because like I said, we would kill nine target pests. All these bees do is go into the ground and put their larvae. They come out for three or four weeks in the summer and that's it, you won't see them anymore. Carpenter bees. Carpenter bees are the ones that they're black, shiny, look dangerous, but they will not sting you. All they do is burrow into the wood to put their larvae. They come back every year. They will hover right in front of your face, but they will not sting you. They are not aggressive at all. We do sometimes come out and treat them, but we have to treat each hole individually. But don't be alarmed if you see these bees flying around the trailers. That's the main place where we see them. Anywhere where there's a deck, wooden handrails, you're going to find these bees. All they're doing is burrowing, burrowing into the wood and putting in their larvae. Cicada killers look dangerous, but they're not. They're about two inches, an inch and a half to two inches long. They hover low to the ground. You can walk right through them. They will not sting you. All they're doing is burrowing into the ground and eating the cicada larvae. That's all they do. Bumblebee looks just like the carpenter bee, but fuzzy. These are aggressive. If you swat at them, they will sting you and their sting is powerful. So be very careful of these bumblebees. Don't mistake them for a carpenter bee. These will come at you. Like any bee, once you swat at them, it's a challenge to them. It's a sign of aggression and they're gonna come at you. European hornets. These are like the bald faced hornet but bigger and more aggressive. They like to hang around. If you got dead trees or anything, if you see a hole in that tree, most likely there's a, bald, a European hornet nest in there. These hornets will chase you. They will wait on you. You can run and jump in the swimming pool. They will hover and wait for you to come back up. If you have a weak immune system, you're sickly or whatever, if they sting you, I guarantee you, you're going to the hospital. If you see these, we need to know immediately. Some schools got certain types of trees, dogwoods or whatever, that releases sap. These bees will be all over that tree trunk. Please call us if you see them. Do not swat or anything. These, they will chase you. Termites. Termites is what we call the solid assassin of buildings. Okay, you have they go through different stages. The ones that you mainly see are the workers. Those are the little white ones you see. They the ones that go out, burrow through the wood, they come back, they feed it to the colony. Okay, you can have termites here, you can have termites about 10 feet away from it. They're not the same colony. All termites fight. They're called satellite colonies. All of them have soldiers. If they were to run into each other in the same burrow, they would send the signal back. The soldiers come, the ones with the pinchers on them. Their main job is to protect the king and queen. The queen, her main job is to stay inside the colony and produce. The king, his job is to keep the queen happy and help her produce. That's their only job. But we do run into them. We do treat for termites. It's a tedious job, but it has to be done, but we do it, and we get rid of them. That's the different stages of the termites. The biggest one you see is the queen. That's her with all of her eggs on her. Right here, these are called mud tubes. This let us know when termites are around. These are subterranean termites. These are the termites that we have in this area in Florida, down south, they have dry wood. These termites right here, this is their basic mode, the way they travel. They cannot be in the light. They have to travel through mud tubes. They need moisture. We could go out and break one of these tubes with them. By the next day, they done sealed it back up. But this mainly lets us know when termites are around. Ants. 
This is one of our common problems in the schools. Like now, change of season coming, ants are coming up. A lot of ants go within four feet into the ground to escape the winter months. Okay, but now that the weather is changing, the ground is warming up, ants are starting to emerge. What they do, the main ants that you see around your house or in the schools or whatever, they're finding a food source. Any little source, an ant can walk across this room, find a crumb. What he would do, he would lower his abdomen to the ground. It would send the scent trail all the way back to the colony. That's why ants walk in, in a straight line. If you was to rub your finger across it, you broke the pheromone trail, and they would start to scatter until another one would pick it back up and lower his abdomen, and they start walking the line. Ants are very tricky to get rid of. We have a lot of species of ants around here that we deal with. But once you get rid of the food source, you'll get rid of the ants. If you got crumbs in the classroom or whatever, you get rid of that, the ants will go away because they no longer have a food source. Do not spray anything at these ants because once you spray them, they will lower their abdomen again and let a danger signal off. That's why they scatter the way they do. And now you done disrupted them. We have a chemical that we spray. They don't know it's a chemical. They walk right through it and they spread it because ants go through their colonies and they rub off and they spread the chemical. And we have a bait that we put down that they could take back to the colony and that would eliminate the whole colony. Right now, we're getting ready to run into swarm season. That's when the termites come up, the ants come up. This happens when the colonies are too big. What happens, the swarmers come out, they will leave. Like termites, they will come out, cover the whole wall. They'll break off their wings as soon as they land. A male will attach itself to a female, and they will find another crack somewhere and go start a whole new colony. When you see swarmers, you know there's a big colony somewhere under there. And we have the equipment to drill down into the soil to get to that colony. The, this is uh, the difference between a swarming ant and a swarming termite. Swarming ants, how you can tell the difference between an ant and a termite? A termite has one thick whole body. Ants have the pinch waist. Their body is segmented. You have the head, abdomen, and the thorax. That's how, that's how to identify the difference between ants and termites. Ants don't break off their wings when they land. Termites do. These are what we call occasional invaders. Uh, earwigs, they look dangerous. They're really not. They hang around the mulchy areas, and they like the moisture. If you go dig up a scoop of mulch, you'll find them under there. Okay, they come in occasionally, but these are the type of what we call their minor. They don't hurt you, but once we do our perimeter treatment, it eliminates all of them from getting into the schools. Millipedes, occasional invader. They hang around the mulchy areas and they come in. They come under the crack of a door, they come in. Sometimes you see them in the building curled up dead in a circle because they dried out. Fruit fly, a lot of people are wondering why if you lay out some fruit, all of a sudden you see a fruit fly flying around. Believe it or not, their larvae is already in your fruit. You could put them in a, this room right now, leave it here till tomorrow, I guarantee you, you're gonna have fruit flies. They be around drains, anywhere where there's moisture and a kind of nectar-like juice, you will find these fruit flies. We have fruit fly traps, do not do anything. I know a lot of people like to look on YouTube or whatever and get these little remedies. That's only temporary. We got something permanent. House fly. We run into a lot of these. We do have a fly bait that controls them and kill them. But a lot of times in the schools, recently we had where flies were in the school or in the uh, press boxes. What happened during the winter months, they get into the wall. They're mainly on the wall that the sun hit a lot because it keeps them warm. All their larvae hatch, then they all start coming out. But we will go in and fog that whole wall on the inside and we'll get, eliminate all of them. House flies, you gotta be careful because 
Once they land, anything they land on, they automatically spit because they don't have uh, jaws or teeth. Their food have to be liquefied. So anything they land on, they spit. That's why I'm, I love getting rid of flies. I hate them. Bed bugs. Occasionally we get bed bugs in the school. They're transported, unfortunately, by one of the kids or whatever. We do treat for them. Uh, the thing about bed bugs is you never know they're on you. Bed bugs, they can't see. They detect the carbon monoxide in your breathing and they sense the heat from your body. If two people are laying in the bed, only one's getting bit. Only one. You cannot feel them bite you because what happens is they spit on the area that numbs you before they pierce you. That's why you don't feel it till a couple of days later. But we do treat for bed bugs. We do have a treatment for that to get rid of them. Fleas. Fleas, different from bed bugs, they do bite you. When they bite you, they fill up with blood. Once they fill up with blood, they lay eggs. That's how they accumulate. We do treat for fleas, it's tedious. A lot of times, people bring them in who have pets at home. We, say we had to have the principal to tell them, let the parents know that they need to get their house treated. We can come and treat for fleas, but if a person keep bringing them in, we're fighting a lost case. Ticks. We do not go out and treat for ticks because ticks, you have to spray the grassy area. We cannot spray it because kids play on those playgrounds. They run around in that grass. We'll kill non-target pests. The best way to control ticks, keep your grass cut low. Keep the grass cut. You will control the ticks in your yard, in the schoolyard. Lice. There is no treatment for the lice. Only treatment is the child will have to be treated. The room will have to be swept and mopped. That's it. Lice needs a host to live on. Without a host, the lice can't live. So there's no pest control treatment for lice. We cannot go in and just spray the room. The, all you have to do is clean the room and get the child treated. Fungus gnats, if you got a lot of plants around in the office, in your classroom, you water it too much, fungus gnats. A lot of times I just uh, repotted one of my plants and I bought the plant soil with the miracle Grow in it. The bag had fungus gnat larvae in it and they hatched out in my office. So I got to change it out. A lot of times that's where it comes from. Watch how you water the plants. Do not overwater plants. And they also hang around some of the drains. If you're not cleaning that drain on a regular basis, you'll start getting fungus gnats. Stink bugs. Stink bugs, even in the winter time, I know sometimes you might see them crawling around occasionally. They're in the ceiling, they get up under the insulation during the winter months, okay? We do treat for them. It's a tedious job because they're constantly coming. You got to get up. Even if you're home, go up in your attic, pull the insulation back in the corner, I guarantee you stink bugs are all in there. They get up through the cracks of the eaves of your house or the school building, and they start coming out once it warms up. But we will treat for them and get rid of them. Spiders. This is what we call a priority job. There are two types of spiders that we're mainly worried about in the schools. Brown recluse and the black widow. The black widow, she's mainly in dark areas where she's least likely to be disturbed. And uh, a lot of custodians, when you go out in them sheds, be careful. Have light on so you can see them because they're set in the corners. They will not come at you until they're dis disturbed. Then they will bite you. When they bite you, you wouldn't know it because their venom affects your nervous system and it's very painful. If you're a sickly person, you have a lot of illnesses, you will go to the hospital. There was a couple occasions where a person had to have a blood transfusion because of this bite. Be very careful when you're going in the closets. They love dark places where they're least likely to be disturbed. Brown recluse, 
also known as the violin spider because of the shape. Brown recluse are different. Just like the black widow, if you go in dark places, that's where they're at. If you messing with a wood pile that's been sitting a while, a lot of times when I go get wood, I grab each log and throw it down first because that's where they would most likely to be. They will bite you, but the brown recluse, when she bites you, it take about a week for her venom to run its course through you. First you start out with two prongs, then it swell up, swell up even more. By that sixth, seventh day, it done really swelled up on you. And the process of getting that taken care of is very, you don't want to go through it because you end up at the bin, have to get a, a skin graft. So you don't want to get bit by this spider, but we do treat for them when we see it, when we have that call. This is very important. A lot of custodians, you have those dust mops. Please always get the cobwebs. Always get the cobwebs. You keep disrupting them, they'll go away. Snakes. We run into these occasionally. A lot of times people call us, oh, we got a copperhead. As soon as they see a garter snake, it's a copperhead. It's not a copperhead, it's a garter snake. We do have copperheads around here, but my years of doing pest control in the schools, I maybe removed like two. And that's between this county and the other county I worked in. Uh, we do run into a lot of black snakes. They will not hurt you, but please let us know when you see them. They do come under the doors sometimes. Schools in low-lying areas where it floods a lot will flush them out of where they at and they come in. You might find a baby one in the hallway or whatever, but we do come and get them and get rid of them for you. Another thing, when you're outside of the school in the spring and the fall and there's a bunch of leaves, have a stick. Rake the leaves because copperheads are the same color as those leaves and sticks on the ground. A lot of people get bit by a copperhead by stepping on them because you don't see them. That's why it's good to have a long stick to hit the leaves. And another way to keep them from around the school, get the leaves up. Don't let the leaves pile up around the school. Get those leaves out of there because they would get up in there and it's warm, it's moist. They would put their eggs in there and start having babies around the school. So we could prevent that by getting rid of a lot of debris around the schools. Rats. We very seldom run into rats around. A lot of times they come from other places. A lot of times the rats come in on the dumpsters. When the trash truck come, they got rats on them. Some of the places they've been to before, some of the restaurants or whatever, they might go dump that. They got rats in the dumpster, the trash truck come got rats on the back. They come to the school, once they stop, a lot of rats will jump off. But rats do come into the school. They find anywhere they burrow into the ground. A rat only need a hole the size of a quarter to get in. So we have to uh, come out, bait them, trap them. But we do get rid of the rats. But the dumpsters, keep it clean around there. Don't let any spilled juices or milk be around that dumpster because rats will come and start eating that. And any furniture on the back loading docks, get rid of it because rats will burrow into that and make a home out of it. And you don't want to surprise a rat. Mice. These are seasonal pests. Starting in the fall, mice will start looking for a nesting spot. They might run past the school door. If they got poor door sweeps on it, they will feel the heat coming from under it. They will slide right under it. Mice only need a hole the size of a dime to get in. Uh, mice accumulate so quick because they can have babies today and within 24 hours, they can start the breeding process again. The best way to alleviate this is seal all food in containers. Do not leave anything out you leave out food, we come and treat, we put a bait down. If the mice found the food source, they would run right past our bait because what they do when they find the food source, they urinate around that food source. They would always know that scent to go to. Do not go buy glue traps or mice traps for these mice. 
let us handle it. We have the equipment and everything to get rid of them. Like I said, keep the trash and recycled dumpsters clean. Uh, get rid of all the broken furniture around the schools. The identification of the rodents. No, a mouse do not grow up to be a rat. There are two different species. We have the Norway rat, the house mouse. Okay, they do not grow up to be a rat. You have the, let's go back down, the roof rat, which is the climber. He's a little smaller than the Norway rat, which you regularly see. The roof rat, you'll see him running across a power line. They climb up walls. All right, but we very seldom see a roof rat. We always have Norway rats around here. Custodians, please don't go out and spray anything around these schools. Not only pesticides, but any type of herbicide, okay? If we come out and see these containers right here, we know that you're spraying something around the school. They are not allowed. Please don't spray them. No type of herbicide, even if you mix vinegar and water, it is not to be sprayed unless you're a commercial applicator. If you have a weed problem or whatever, call the grounds department. We will take care of it. This is also the season for cicadas to emerge. This is supposed to be the big season. Okay, we do not have a chemical for cicadas. They don't harm you, they are nuisance. All they're doing is coming out, dropping their larvae, go to the nearest tree that got sap and start feeding while the larvae drop and burrow into the ground and wait for the next 17 years. Please shut all the windows in the schools. Keep the doors closed so they don't get in. They're a nuisance, but they're not a pest, and we do not have a chemical for them. Okay, integrated pest management. What that means is doing pest control with a limited amount of chemicals. A lot of times we have to use chemicals. We do have preventative measures. Uh, we seal a lot of holes. We do a lot of stuff uh, to prevent a lot of pests. A lot of things we tell the school to put in a work order for structural to come in and do it because it's too big of a job for us to do. But if you have any problem with any of these, you could contact me, uh, Lee Riley, supervisor of pest control, uh, my bosses, Michael Bushrod, Assistant Manager of the Grounds Department, Andrew Reynoso, Manager of Grounds Department, Woodson Grounds, or Bryce Boyd, the Coordinator of Woodson Grounds and Pest Control. And that'll be it for this session of Pest Control for the School District. Thank you very much.